Okay, so, <laughs> Best Translate Book Award. Um, <laughs> we're gonna have in a few minutes, uh, Lauren Stein, who used to be an editor at Friar Stouts and Drew and worked on the Bolaño books, um, including 2666, is going to say a few words and open the, the prize winning names and announce everything. And what, the only thing that I wanted to say about this whole award um, is that uh, to geek out for a second, like I'm very psyched about these envelopes. Like this thing started four years ago in like my office when it was snowing in Rochester and I was pissed off about something and uh, decided that we should have like a list of like the best books that came out the previous year that were just in translation. And from there to get to this point where we have um, nine judges in the fiction panel, many of whom are here, so if your book doesn't win, you can find them and complain. Um, and to have a poetry panel of five people who are deciding the poetry prize, and to have envelopes, and to have awards that are over there that are physical awards, is like way further than I ever thought that this little idea, this little ranty moment, would take us. And it's, it's fantastic. And on top of that, we even have um, John Fine from Amazon, who's going to talk in a moment, who sponsored this event by giving us prize money so that every winning author and translator will receive Received five thousand dollars, which is huge, and for a number of reasons, and is is fantastic. All the support that they're doing for for international literature. So I'm actually going to turn this all over to John, who will say a few words, and then Lauren can talk, and he'll announce the winners. And if the winners are here, or someone a representative of the winner is here, please come up on stage. I'll give you your award, and you can say a few words about whatever you want. So here's John Fine from Amazon. Wow, you're right. Thanks, Chad. Uh, you, you really are the great connector. Uh, it's unbelievable. Um, I'm going to make these very few words. Uh, we're just really happy to be able to support bringing these great stories into the English language. It's something we're really committed to, not just because we think these are great stories, but also because uh, we think there's a real opportunity to expand the audience for these uh, emerging or established voices outside of the state. So just really happy to be a part of this moment. and. Uh, I think I should just turn it over to Lauren. Cheers. This part. Uh, I'm Lauren Sun. I'm the editor of the Paris Review. It's a great honor to be here tonight. I, I have very little to say except that this is um, great work that 3% has been doing. and. Um, we all know that there's a lot to be done to, 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 to get, to raise from 3% to 4%. And Chad, I hope when the number does get to 4, you'll call yourselves 4 and 5 and 6. I've always thought it was a little, you were setting the bar a tiny bit low. But, um, but the best, or at least the noblest way, to get people to read stuff in translation is for publishers to find the best things and then to find the best translators and for translators to do the best jobs, and that's what I think this prize is probably all about. So um, first I'll read the finalists for this year's Poetry Prize, and I hope you'll all forgive my uh, mispronunciations. Um, the first is Geometries by Guy Vic, translated from the French by Richard Siebert. Yeah. I I've never said this before. Please hold your applause until I get to the um, uh, Time of Sky and Castles in the Air by Ayane Kawata, translated from the Japanese by Sawako Nakayasu. Child of Nature by Lulieta Leshenaku, yeah? Yeah. Uh, translated from the Albanian by Henry Israeli. The Book of Things by Elish Steger, translated from the Slovenian by Brian Henry and Flashcards by Yu Zhang, translated from the Chinese by Wang Ping and Ron Padgett. And the winner is... <laughs> the Book of Things by Alice Steger, translated by Brian Henry, published by BOA. Very few words to say. My name is Bernadette Catalan. I'm chair of the board of Boa Editions Limited. Uh, we consider ourselves the little press that could. 
We've been around for 35 years, and today more than ever, poetry is so important to all of us because it gives hope to all of us in these really challenging times. Thanks, everyone, for your support. Thank you. BOA. BOA editions, not BOA. <laughs> uh, I've always gotten it wrong. Um, uh, the finalists for the Fiction Prize are The Literary Conference by Cesar Ira, translated from the Spanish by Catherine Silver. The Golden Age by Michal Ayvath, translated from the Czech by Andrew Oakland. A Life on Paper by Georges-Olivier Chateaurineau, translated from the French by Edward Govin. The, or is it Gauvin? The, the Jokers by Albert Cosseri, translated from the French by uh, Anna Maskovakis. Visitation by Jenny Epenpeck, translated from the German by Susan Bernowski. Hocus Bogus by Romain Gary, writing as uh, Emile Ajar, translated from the French by David Bellis. The True Deceiver by Tova Janssen, translated from the Swedish by Thomas Thiel. On Elegance While Sleeping by Emilio Lascano Tegui, translated from the Spanish by uh, Idra Nove. Agat by Marlena van, van Niekerk, translated from the Afrikaans by Michael Heinz. Georg Letam, Physician and Murderer by Ernst Weiss, translated from the German by Joel Rotenberg. And the winner is The True Deceiver by Tova Janssen, translated by Thomas Thiel, published by the New York Review of Books. so grateful for this uh, but I have to say I'm also a little amazed and uh, even embarrassed I, I uh, had a chance to l look at a, a number of the other nominated books <clears throat> and realizing that I didn't have a chance of winning I decided to celebrate the bejesus out of uh, out of making the short list which I did <laughs> Um, this really means a, a, a great deal to me. I've been tr translating for 50 years from uh, Swedish, Norwegian, and Danish, mostly Swedish, <clears throat> although I took a, a long pause to have a career as a speech writer and a, and a business writer and then started again after I, I retired. But uh, I, I I want to I want to thank you, Chad and Three Percent and uh, and Rochester and Amazon uh, and uh, anyone else I've left out of that list and <clears throat> and of course I also want to thank uh, Tuva Janson herself. She died in 2001, so she doesn't get to um, celebrate her success this evening, which is a shame. But I want to also thank the New York Review books, uh, specifically Sarah Kramer and uh, Edwin Frank and uh, Jenny Hederman. Um, and maybe first and foremost, I want to thank Natanya Jantz and Mark Ellingham of Sort of Books in London, who uh, commissioned uh, this translation. Can I do I have can I tell just a quick story um, about about 40 years ago I translated a book by this same author Tuva Jansson called the summer book uh, and it was published by Pantheon here um, I, I sold them the translation outright as we did in those days I guess today uh, it's not uncommon to get uh, a uh, royalty but it certainly wasn't in those days the book did fairly well. Uh, 
and then went out of print and disappeared. Eight years ago, my wife and I were on our way to Finland to uh, actually to go to a birthday party. And um, the day we arrived in Vasa, which is um, on the west coast of Finland, I, I bought a the morning paper, the morning Swedish newspaper, Finland being a bilingual country, and my my own name popped out at me. Uh, on, on the occasion was that this book, the summer book, which is a charming and delightful book about a a little girl and her grandmother on a summer island by themselves, had just been reissued by Sort of Books in London. Uh, when we got to Helsinki about a week later, I, I found a copy, and when I got back to the United States, I wrote to uh, Sort of Books in London and congratulated them on reissuing this book, uh, which was so such a such a wonderful book, and I thanked them for the nice things that they said about my translation, uh, and I talked a little about Tove Janssen, and then in a postscript, I said. You, you thank Random House for, which owned Pantheon, um, for giving you the rights to, to my translation. And I just wonder, just out of curiosity, if anyone tried to get in touch with me. I mean, you had no reason to do that. I, haven't, I own no rights to this book. Uh, but I'm just curious if you, if you even tried to get in touch with me. <laughs> and bang, a letter came back from London, and, they, and, and Natanya Jans said, yes, indeed, we did try to get in touch with you, um, but Random House had no current address, and we couldn't find a current address for you. And the reason we wanted to get in touch with you was that we had decided to give you a royalty. <laughs> and enclosed with the letter was a check for 3,500 pounds. <clears throat> a little over, well, I'm glad you're applauding. You're, you are people who have heard these horror stories about publishers who don't pay money to writers and translators and poets that they owe them. And here was a publishing house that insisted on paying me money that they didn't owe me. <laughs> So, needless to say, when they offered me another translation, uh, also by Tove Janssen, I, I jumped at the chance. Uh, and that was um, a book called Fair Play that, in fact, uh, won the Bernard Shaw Translation Prize in London last year, if I may blow my own horn a little. <clears throat> and, and, then, and then this book, and I can't tell you how gratifying it is. Uh, since translators get so little recognition as a rule, uh, that that this whole event is taking place, and of course that I myself have won this <laughs> this award. So, <clears throat> thank you, thank you, thank you.